in an effort to waste as much of my time on planet Earth as humanly possible, because we have one shot here, people, let's not blow it, I spend a good chunk of my time watching these crappy streamer films in the hopes, in the search, that one of them will be just even okay. Between Hulu, Amazon Prime, Peacock, Netflix, Apple TV, Disney Plus, Max, Crackle, Smackle, Tackle. Some of those aren't real, but who knows? Actually, they probably all are. They're probably all real. And so is this movie, The Union. It exists. You should watch it because Netflix paid a stupid amount of money to make it for you so that you stay on their stupid service, paying your $16 a month or whatever stupid charge they give you now that you don't really pay attention to because they just keep raising the prices in the background. Knowing that you probably forgot Sometimes I look at streamers like direct-to-DVD movies you used to find back in the Diz. When you would head on over to the Blockbuster and you'd look at the top shelf or bottom shelf, depending on what, you know, rental store you have, and you'd see these movies that were kind of off with the titles. They were very generic. Usually the, the biggest name they had in them was like a C-lister, like a Casper Van Dion or something. But the difference is these movies star real actors, like big name actors. This one has Mark Wahlberg and Halle Berry. J.K. Simmons is in here, giving in zero effort. He's just using a stock J.K. Simmons template that he once in a while pulls out for the gruff, rough and tumble type of character. Mike Coulter is just phoning it in. These people don't need to really work. They just have to show up. And maybe not even that half the time. Who knows? It's all done in post. We'll just get a stunt double who can do the majority of the running and jumping scenes. Although, when it comes to this movie and Halle Berry... The stunt double wasn't doing much either because, man, was this a stiff action film. And, and, and not, in, not in the good way. Halle Berry plays Roxanne Hall. She works for the union. And I don't mean like blue-collared worker union. I mean a secret underground agency. They do all the work. They're the people that get their hands dirty in the FBI, CIA, whoever. They just get the credit. After a beginning mission goes south, where we see these trained professionals that work for the union trying to do an escort mission out in the middle of the open streets instead of taking alleyways and being more covert, they start getting picked off. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. The second they start getting killed, I thought, okay, the rest of the team is going to split off. They're going to start going underground. They're going to head inside buildings so that they're not easy targets. No, they just keep running out in the open. Shoot me, please. Shoot me. They have no idea where the assassins are coming from or how many there are. They just know that they're getting shot. And this opener is really going to set the tone for the rest of the film as we see the final guy who's still alive make his way to the destination, which is no more than 10 feet further than where his other teammates were killed. And he's just out there in the open. Hey, I'm at the extraction point. Fully open. Not even under a tree or a light post. Just wandering around, sauntering around, waiting for the pickup. I sure hope I don't get... <laughs> There's going to be spoilers in this, by the way. Just letting you know there's gonna be spoilers in this video. He falls over the bridge in the water and I thought there's no way he's dead. He's a named actor. They're not gonna kill him off right away, especially when he conveniently falls into the water. He's gonna be fine. And guess what? He didn't die. He was fine. He shows up later in the movie in this amazing reveal that he's actually the villain. Who could have saw that coming when he conveniently shows up and is like, yeah, I survived. I swam down the canal and got help. And then I, and then I lived off of bugs and uh, old rainwater for weeks at a time. And here I am. And I'm ready to help you guys out. I'm definitely not a villain. But this whole movie is so generic across the board. And not even a fun generic. It's just a mind-numbingly lame movie. At the 50-minute mark, I gave it a full 50 minutes. I busted out my laptop and I started doing some work. And then every once in a while, I would look up and be like... <laughs> Okay. Uh. And that's where we're at with movies that go to streamers. That's where we're at. These are movies for people that work from home, that they put on their TV in the background and they barely pay it any attention. This is for the mom or dad out there who's making kids lunches. Every once in a while, they take a gander at what's going on on the TV in the other room. This is for Aunt Pauline who just thinks that Marky Mark is so damn handsome. You put him in a film with Halle Berry who she'll draw on a little bit of an audience as well. She still looks fantastic and you have yourself a nice little movie. 
after the intro is completed and we learn that the union's not that great at their jobs, even though we're supposed to be impressed by them for some reason, Roxanne Hall, in her infinite wisdom, decides that her team needs to recruit the super special, super awesome salt of the earth, Mike. <laughs> Mike, a name you can't forget because the movie reminds you of his name every five seconds. Mike, how's it going, Mike? Mike, you old son of a gun. Mike, what are you up to, Mike? Mike, my man, Mikey, Michael, Mike, Mike, Mike. When he's not shagging the teacher from seventh grade and hot wiring cars, Mike is working a nice, honest job. He's doing the dangerous work that most people won't do. He's high up in the beams, soldering, eating a sandwich up there with his friends, getting a photo taken, you know, things that these guys do. And because Mike was good at sports in high school, and today works a job like that, he is the perfect candidate to work for the union. Because unlike those fancy pants guys over at the FBI or those snooty, hoity-toity CIA agents, the union is all about the regular guy. The guy that gets up and works a nine to five, goes home, pays his bills, and takes a sleep. Who takes a sleep? What a weird way to, I was gonna say takes a nap, but you don't take a nap at night. Anyway, and we're gonna keep going. And since Roxanne knew Mike from high school, they had a little fling. You know, it, was, it was more than a little fling, but she broke his heart by leaving and working for the union. He didn't know that, he just thought she up and left him. But she's back in his life now, all these years later, to recruit him and to win him over. She goes out with drinks, takes him to a nice park for a dance, and then of course, injects him with an agent that will knock him out, take him to London, wake him up and say, hey, you're working for us now. If this all seems incredibly far-fetched and ridiculous, it's because it's incredibly far-fetched and ridiculous. The premise here on its face is we're taking a regular schlub who's still in tip-top shape, we're going to pull him out of his environment, throw him head first into this sketchy, scary scenario where he's gonna go up against trained assassins, murderers, really seedy individuals, but we're gonna give him a week or two of training first because that's all it takes. Just a couple weeks of training and you're fine. That's gonna kick in a montage where he's blindfolded, running along a rooftop, hoping not to fall off, listening to the sweet whispers of Halle Berry telling him not to take one more step or he's gonzo. He's gonna do target practice. He's gonna drive in a car. And he's gonna be a fast learner, acing all of this in just a couple short weeks. Now, I would lie to you if I said I knew what the fuck was going on in this film, because at this point, I'm completely lost. Typically, action movies, even thrillers, espionage, stuff like that, very easy to follow uh, if it's done right. I don't know what this movie's about. I'm gonna be straight with you. I have no idea what this movie's about. They're trying to get their hands on a MacGuffin, but it's destroyed. But then it turns out there's like five more of them so they can just go on this hunt for different ones because it's got information about the company or I, I really don't know. I, I checked out so early on from the plot and it really didn't seem like it was making much sense. There was such a disconnect from the first scene where it was a rescue mission, to recruiting Mikey and seeing if he has what it takes to win the day, to then learning about some dude who used to work at Amazon and he was awesome at that and now he works for the union. This movie is such a shit show. Let's step away from the plot and talk about the action because even a stupid plot like the beekeeper can have some fun action scenes, right? Well, not in the case of the union, those are terrible too. I already mentioned how stiff Halle Berry is in this movie. Every action scene with her is just kind of like, she's reaching up for something and then slowly climbing because she doesn't want to break a hip. Mark Wahlberg does even less. He throws a rock at one point and hits a guy in the back of the head. At another point, he's on a motorcycle driving at some bad guys who are shooting at him and his genius plan is to make himself more available for bullets by grabbing on a bar, letting the motorcycle go and then doing a pull up. I mean, the amount of time it takes to hop off a bike, suspend here, and then slowly pull yourself up, this guy should have been pumping you full of lead. There was a funny moment where he's fighting some bad guys down below in an alleyway, and Halle Berry shoots a couple of them, and she's like, you owe me. And then another bad guy pops up right next to her, and Wahlberg shoots that dude, and he's like, you owe me. Or I don't remember what they said. It was something like, I got you, you got me, sort of a thing. All I'm thinking is, where the fuck did the dude come from that was up on the rooftop? He just kind of like shows up right next to her. Why didn't he shoot her in the back when she was facing Mark Wahlberg? He walks right up to her like, hey. These are the things that keep me up at night. So the acting, uninspired. 
phoning it in. Halle Berry is smiling a lot. She's laughing. She still looks great, but she's not giving a good performance. I can tell you that. Mark Wahlberg's terrible in this. He's incredibly hit and miss to begin with, but when he's in a bad movie, he lets you know it. Uh, shades of Max Payne here in the acting department. Action is impressively lame. How the hell do you take Halle Berry, who was just in John Wick 3, freaking owning that movie, to utilizing her in just the worst way in this one? It's, it's, it's just sad. It's pathetic. Production values. Uh, well, it's crisp 8K resolution, if that does anything for you. Doesn't do crap for me when there's no cinematic quality to it. It's a streamer. It's using those amazing digital cameras that look like shit, so it feels like a glorified straight-to-TV movie. The soundtrack. <laughs> Again, what, is anybody getting paid in Hollywood anymore? Are there even real composers? This felt so freaking basic. I can't even replicate the genericness of it all. I'm a week behind on this. I think it was trending number one last week on Netflix. It's down to six. So anybody who saw it, watched it, and has moved on with their life, but not me. I'm here now. This is what you're getting. A, a review for The Union. Horrible. Horrible film. Watchable? I mean, when we say watchable, what does that even mean? No, it's not watchable. You're not sitting down and going to watch this for an hour and 45 minutes. You will have it on. That's maybe what we should say now for these films. Honorable? Yeah, it's honorable. You can put it on and go do other things. It's like a Nickelodeon action movie. It's so safe and by the numbers generically bad. There's like no swearing really. There's no violent acts. It's so pathetic and stale across the board. I hate these kind of movies. They're not awful enough to be fun to bitch about, and they're not good enough to really even celebrate any small aspect of it. It's just so nothing. And there you go, my thoughts on the union. Clearly, clearly loved it. Let me know yours. Leave a comment below if you've watched this film or if you're, if you're enticed to now. Man, Adam really gave a glowing review of this one. I should check it out. Please think about subscribing to the channel. I post movie reviews every single week, a bunch of videos every week. Would love to have you stick around. It's all movies all the time here. I'm just having fun sharing my thoughts, always honest, and hopefully they give you a laugh or two. If you really want to laugh, maybe check out my second channel, Adam Does Rants, where it's just me doing this for like 15 minutes at a time complaining about first world problems. It's They're over the top. It's things we all struggle with, I think. Brushing your teeth, people being on their phones in public, listening to TikTok videos without headphones. What, what are we doing anymore in society? That's the kind of stuff. If you love what I'm doing, you can leave a super thanks right on this video. Say, hey Adam, thanks for the laughs. Here's a few bucks. Or become a member on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. At even $1, you get access to over 300 exclusive videos. And there's some really good ones on there, I promise you. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.